Okay, our next sociological theory of crime is called labelling theory. There's a couple of lessons on this. It's quite a big deal. And it's not just a big deal in crime and deviance. It's a big deal in other parts of sociology as well. So it's important to get you to get your head around it. So we're going to learn about Howard Becker's theory of crime and deviance. It's the name of the sociologist, Howard Becker. To understand how it might work in everyday life, by doing that, of course, you are thinking like a sociologist. You're going to apply this theory, labelling theory. Keywords, young, working class, male, ethnic minority, all the groups that we expect to be involved in crime more than other groups. Chav, a uh, term of abuse to the working class. Expectations, interpretations, context, the background of something, role, status, police, courts. Okay, so, it starts off with the idea, context is king. What we mean by this is it's not what somebody does, it's the where and the when. So, you are naked on a beach. The beach is a nudist beach. You are allowed to be naked there. Or, You flash somebody in the street at a bus stop. Same thing, nudity, but this is okay, this is not, this is criminal. Guy went onto a pitch, a rug as a cricket game, gets arrested, it's streaking. But, still regarded as a bit of a joke, not regarded as a perverted criminal act. So completely okay, sort of a bit of a laugh, quite a serious crime. But nudity is the same in all three of them. So it is not the nudity, it's the where and the when, and that's the context. So context is king, and we're going to write some examples, any more we can think of in class. And actions are the same, it's the where and the when. That's how labelling theory starts. And this insight was used by this guy here, Howard Becker. It's kind of the idea of symbolic interaction. It's not the action. It's not the action. It's the who does it, where they do it, and what's going on inside the head of the person who sees it. Yeah? So we see these actions and we decide whether they're criminal or deviant. It's an interaction between who's doing it, why they're doing it, what they're doing, where they're doing it. All those three things, all those four things mixed together, they interact for us to decide what it means. It's not what, it's not what happens, it's what we think of what's happening that's important. What we think about the person doing it. And there's some examples here we can think of. So at school, let's imagine it's halfway through period three. I'm not teaching, I'm on patrol in the corridor. As I walk down the corridor, Luke Stone walks past me. What do I think? I think, all right, Luke, how are you doing? I, what, what do I assume? I assume he's going somewhere to do something. He's been asked to do it. So I probably don't say anything to Luke apart from hello. A minute later, a minute later, I see Harry Ward in the corridor or some, somebody else who gets in trouble a lot. They're doing the same thing. They're walking in a corridor during lesson time. But my reaction to it is different. I assume they're bunking, they're true, and they've been chucked out. There's been something like that. The action is the same. A year 11 boy walking in a corridor during lesson times. What's different is the person doing the walking and the thoughts of the person doing the watching. Same thing in a street.
schoolboys sitting on fences. If you saw these, they're chavs, they're going to rob you, blah, blah, blah. So these are the posh lads. But the action's the same. They're about the same age and they're doing the same physical thing. They're sat on a fence. They're sat down. What goes on in your head when you see these images, if you're in real life, is different. You label them as different. It's not what they're doing. It's how you have labelled them. Same thing happens in court. You're a magistrate, somebody walks in, young black guy walks in, he's got his trousers around his bum, you can see his pants, he's walking like one leg shorter than the other, and he's wearing his hat. Magistrate thinks, guilty. White boy walks in, dressed respectably, collar and tie, walking properly. Magistrate thinks, innocent. Before any evidence has been given. Yeah. So these are examples of Becker's idea of symbolic interactionism and how it can affect crime and deviance. In particular, how the criminal courts, the criminal service, how us see criminals. That's the key bit here.